Welcome back, everybody, to Imperion Galactic Survival on version 1.1. I'm an old guy gaming, and this is the Getting Started in Imperion tutorial series. And we are on part something. <laughs> I don't know what we're on. At 19, 18, 19, something like that. Man, I never thought we were going to do this many videos when I started this tutorial series. But um, there's just so much, so much stuff to cover. There really is. And uh, getting really good positive feedback from guys. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll keep going until, you know, until we're done. So, uh, in this episode, the main goal is going to be to get our farm going. And um, it's only, it, it hasn't been the next day, in-game day, since the last episode. So, none of this stuff that we harvested has grown back yet. So, we'll just keep an eye on it and see, you know, if that uh, ends up actually happening. My guess is that it will, but I don't know that for sure. So, we're going we're gonna to confirm one way or the other for sure if it does respawn the next, the next day. Uh, which is kind of what I've been told. So let's get started uh, without further ado on our farm. So the first thing you need to do in Imperial when it comes to a farm is that you need to uh, make crop plots. So let's go to our constructor here and we'll go to the blocks menu and uh, make sure we're on base. And these are, are, are growing plots, I guess they're called. Excuse me. And you can make, um, you can make concrete and wood and you used to be able to make steel too, and maybe you still can. There might be some some prereq that I'm missing uh, for that, um, but definitely you can make wood and concrete. I usually just end up making the concrete because I usually have plenty of cement for that anyway. But you could also make out of, make them out of wood. It doesn't really matter, uh, you know, what you make them out of in terms of. You know, if one's better than the other, other than the fact that the, the wooden one's going to be lighter, but also a little bit uh, weaker. So what do we need for this? We need a nutrient solution is the prime ingredient for a crop plot. So we make nutrient solution over here in the food processor, uh, right from here. The nutrient solution requires stone dust and spoiled uh, food rather and purified water. Okay, so let's do this. Let's connect to our refrigerator. And what we're going to do is we've got 71 spoiled food in here. And, and we have that because even in the refrigerator, stuff still will eventually spoil. Okay, uh, it just takes much longer, of course, just like it would with, with a real refrigerator. But I want to connect to that because we're going to go out here and we've made several bottles of purified water. And I want to put those straight into the refrigerator. And then we also need some, we're going to need some, I think it said plant fiber, right? Let's take a look again. Uh, no, stone dust. We need stone dust. So let's, do we have any stone left over? Yeah, let's grab whatever leftover stone we have in these guys. And we'll just see how far we can get with that. And if we have to go, you know, mine some more up, we have to go mine some more up. It's not a big deal. Okay, so those have been put in the refrigerator as well. And we have some stone dust in here and some additional stone. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this stone dust over and maybe even... I don't know, let's keep maybe 20 stone in there and we'll put those in the fridge too. And that should be pretty good. Now, in terms of the size of the farm that we're going to build, I think for the tutorial series, um, the plan is, you know, to, to create a wing out on this side of the building... So we might do, we might do either two or four sections. Um, each section, and I'll explain what I mean by that, is is nine uh, grow plots uh, together in a square. So a three by three square, essentially. So if we did that many, we would need a total of 81 nutrient solutions. And we only have 71 spoiled food. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and just make what we can uh, with what we have. So I'm just going to queue up 100 and let it go to town, if, assuming we can even make, uh, you know, uh, 71. I think that's what we started with, right? And we'll just see, you know, we'll see where we're at from there. And then, yeah, so I put the water in there and we'll see where we're at uh, after that. Okay, so while we're waiting for the crop plots... Um, we're also going to need sprouts. Now, sprouts can either be made um, in this menu here, 
Uh, but in order to make the sprouts, you have to have usually four of the item, the fruit or the grain or whatever that it requires. Um, I usually, I mean, I guess it depends upon, you know, what I currently have on hand. But what I will usually do when it comes time to do sprouts is I'll actually probably go per just purchase those from the Talon or from the Polaris. They're not that expensive and it's just easier than, you know, trying to gather stuff up. Now, some plants are not that hard to gather. Others you can't find at all on certain planets, right? And so it's just simpler to go to the space station uh, or to the planet side station um, or to the Talon, you know, either it, any of those will work and just buy uh, what you need. And I take that back. I don't think you can actually buy seeds from the planetary Polaris station. You actually have to go up into space uh, to their space station and buy them up there. But you can buy from the Talon. And you can purchase from the factions as long as you're neutral or better. You'll, you'll get crappy prices if you're neutral. But again, I'm not worried about that be simply because seeds don't cost that much in the first place. We are, however, going to have to come up with some bank to do that. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. We can either do some questing for uh, the Talon. Um, so we could do like pest control. Or we could, um, and or, we could make some level one weapons and go sell those to the Polaris for some money. We might end up doing a combination of both of those things. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this Talon mission. And all they really want me to do is go kill uh, 10 predatory animals. The funny thing about this is that it says... Uh, you know, predators are roaming our territory, frightening our children and attacking our workers. Will you take care of that threat and fend off the predators? It suggests that you need to do it on their tar territory, but you can actually kill them anywhere on the planet and it'll count. So it's a really pretty easy quest to do. Plus you get, you know, the meat and the XP from killing the predators as well. If you look in the upper right corner underneath my mini map, you'll see that it says hunt predators and then kill predators zero out of 10. So basically that is showing me my active quest and what my objective is. So, before we worry too much about that, though, we need to get the structure itself built first. So, I have been uh, accumulating, I've been accumulating cement blocks, and we, we already have quite a few, or I'm sorry, concrete blocks. We have quite a few here, too. So, we're going to connect to our output bin, and we're going to go out here and grab all of these concrete blocks that we've been making. Oh, look at that. We don't have enough room um, for those in the output, so we're going to... Um, you know what actually we're going to do, guys? We're going to make another container. The thing that we showed you in the last episode about extensions and controllers, we really need to do that in our base, too. I just don't think I want to take the time to do that now. Um, but we should do that at some point. I think for now, we're just going to, to keep things simple. And we're just going to make ourselves um, another cargo box. And this cargo box is going to be dedicated to nothing but holding uh, these very heavy concrete blocks, okay? So let's do the uh, uh, that button there. Who's the was it? What the hell is it called? Oh, man. We, uh, okay, let, we'll have to put it in our own inventory because we're so full. Let's press T to get back out of the wireless menu. Actually, no, we'll press F4 and disconnect. And then we're going to put this block just down. Uh, we don't even need this thing anymore. On our toolbar. And let's just plop this... We're going to right click and choose uh, the large container, which is this guy. And we're going to put that right up above there. Okay, now I told you this yesterday, but before you can name something on your base, it has to be grouped. So we're going to press the P key for, uh, for control panel. We're going to go to devices and we're going to click the auto group button. Because right now... I can select this container that I just put down, but it doesn't give me an option to name it. And I want to name it so that I, I know what it is and what it's for. So we're going to auto group. Remember, if you have created custom groups, this will clear them. We're not worried about that right now because we haven't created custom groups, but it is something to be aware of. Uh, and now we can select the cargo box that we just put. And we're going to call this, we're going to actually keep this in place even after we're done building. So uh, what I like to do is I like to call this overflow. Okay, so that is now our overflow bin. We only have three cargo containers in this space, so it's not hard to tell them apart, but when, as your base gets larger and you add more and more containers or, and or controllers with extensions, um, it can start to be a little bit confusing to know what's what. So it's really a, it's a really a good idea to name those things. Okay, let's press F4. 
And what we're going to do on this side is we're going to select base and then our overflow. And we're going to move um, concrete blocks from there. See, that almost filled the whole damn thing up because those things are so heavy. Let's go to the input. Um, no, I'm sorry. We want to... Did I still leave some blocks out on the ground here? Oh, crap, I did. Okay, let's quickly get those into here so we don't lose them because they will despawn. Um, and then what we in might end up needing to do is we'll just leave uh, the rest of these in here until we need them later. Because somehow or another, the portable constructor just magically doesn't have the same, <laughs> the same weight and volume restrictions as normal containers. But we're not complaining about that. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So we want to, um, uh, can we put these in here too? Almost, almost. Okay, well, we're, we'll, we'll start with these 200, and then we'll go from there. So I'm going to go back to my player on that side. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that, guys, is because you have, whenever you connect to the wireless menu, it always has to be whatever you have selected on the right-hand side. You can't wirelessly connect to whatever you have on the left-hand side. Let's select our overflow bin and connect to it. And sometimes when you do that, it bugs out, and I don't actually see the blocks uh, that are in there. So if you just get out of the menu and back in, then they will appear. I did that, of course, with the F4 key. Now, we're also going to... Um, we're going to put some glass on our greenhouse, too. You don't actually need to do that, but I liked to do it because it just looks better. Um, so let's go ahead and queue up some glass blocks and... We're not going to do, you can do armored windows, which have a thousand hit points, or you can do normal windows, which only have 250. The, the nice thing about this, too, is in the earlier game, when I may not have the resources, the titanium in particular, to do the armored windows, I can always start with the normal ones, and then I can upgrade them later with my multi-tool. So for our purposes, we're just going to create normal windows for now. And I'm going to, I'm not entirely sure how many of these I'm going to need, so let's just not go you know balls out here and let's just do let's just queue up like say 20 okay so i held down shift and i clicked twice because shift click will queue 10 at a time now there's one more thing we're also going to need for our greenhouse and we're going to need grow lights so if we go to um the devices and make sure we're on the base we want to make ourselves some grow lights but i don't have the grow light learned so i need to go to the tech tree with the f3 key click the base tab and find the grow light and double click on it to learn it. Okay? Now we're going to go back in to devices, make sure we're on base, and I'm going to just queue up two of these for now. I think we're going to do four plots, but let's start with two, and then we can make two additional ones later on if indeed that's what we end up doing. Very good. Let's check our fuel on the base with the P key. I'm going to just top this off. Another thing we are going to do soon-ish is we're going to set up some solar power too, but we'll do that after we get the garden in place. Uh, so let's see, I want to go to um, output, and let's just go ahead and grab these these uh, promethium packs and just fill that tank all the way back up. We could have used the biofuel as well, but we'll go ahead and just use the promethium. Okay, now let's get into our hover vessel here. Fire it up with the Y key. And I'm just going to move the hover vessel out back behind the base because we need to, it out of the way so we can work over there. Press Y to cut the power. Hop out with the F key. Excellent. Okay. So it is time for us to build our greenhouse. So here's kind of what I have in mind for this. We could directly attach it to the base if we wanted to. And there's no harm in doing that. Or we might want to make it kind of as a separate, um, you know, a separate outbuilding or a separate wing, which is kind of what I have in mind. There's no pros or cons per se for doing that one way or the other. It's just really what whatever suits your fancy, so to speak. So what I'm thinking we'll do is we'll create ourselves um, a walkway coming from um, this door. And maybe what we'll do is we'll make it, I don't know, let's say one, two, three. Let's make it four blocks over. Okay, um, and then then we'll put the actual greenhouse building over here. 
Now another thing I might want to do, because I have a walkway now, is I might want to put some rails on there so I don't accidentally fall off and hurt myself. Not that it's that far, it's not a big deal, but let's do that too. So rails are actually in the blocks menu. I want to make sure that I'm on bases. And then we're just going to queue up um, eight walkways and railings. And we might also go ahead and... You know what? Actually, I don't think we need to do eight. Let's just do four because I think there's a there, there's a double rail option that we can use with that. And we might also want to... Let's just do three because maybe we'll put some stairs on either side of the walkway. So if we happen to be, you know, on this side of the house, we can walk up the stairs to get up to it. Not that it's a big deal to jump up to it, but, you know, we'll make things nice and neat. All right. Very good. Now. I'm going to get um, in my drone. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our symmetry plane. So remember, we do that by pressing the N as in Nancy key. We select symmetry plane. And we, we're going to do, um, I think we're going to do the XZ plane on this. Or I'm sorry, not the XZ, the y, XY. There we go. Um, so that, and, and we want to make sure that that is set right in the center of the block. Uh, we can we can move this around by clicking with the mouse right um so you just click on the object that you want to center it on to to uh to, to put it in place we'll press the n key again to remove the n menu you could also do that by pressing escape and now we have our symmetry plane in place so that when we put or build our our blocks it will mirror it on the other side so here's how i'm going to do this I'm going to go ahead and press T to get back to my wireless menu. And this block here is going to be the doorway uh, to the um, to the greenhouse. Now, let's just also pop one block down there for a moment um, to use it. This is going to be the start of the wall. In fact, here, let's just do a couple, a couple more. And what I want to do in my greenhouse is I want to leave an aisle down the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and do four blocks here. Okay. And now I'm going to do um, one, two, three, four this way. And we're going to do four uh, this way. This, as, you'll, as you can see, is a three by three square. And this is where we're going to put our first section of crop plots. Okay, and of course, um, it also created a spot for us to do our second section as well. Now let's repeat this process. So we're going to go ahead and go out uh, four blocks this way. We're going to go four blocks this way. Whoop. And four blocks this way. And that will be our second crop plot. So, so if we fill this up entirely, um, we're going to fill up 30. Uh, we're going to have a total of 36 uh, slots. Which, you know what? Yeah, I completely miscalculated that. We actually need 36 crop plots for what I'm planning. Uh, I, I was once again getting confused with my Let's Play series, because in my Let's Play series, I built the same configuration, but I built two stories of it, so there was actually there's actually 81 crop plots. Now, the crop plots themselves, or the grow plots, are airtight blocks, so I don't need... To, I, I can just leave this as ground. I don't need to fill that in, but... One thing that is important when you're building a garden or a greenhouse is you do need to make sure that your building itself is airtight because the plants do need to have a, a greenhouse type of environment in order to properly grow. And if it's too cold or if there's radiation you know, leaking in or anything like that, um, they either won't grow at all or, they'll, or it'll kill the plants after they're already grown. So airtight is a very important consideration when you're building a farm. If you happen to be building this farm on a planet that does not have a breathable atmosphere, then you, in addition to making sure it's airtight, you also have to ventilate it with a ventilator and oxygen. We don't need to do that on this planet because this is a breathable atmosphere, but you do need to do that if you're on a planet where that is not the case. All right, good. Now, what we might do here is we might put another door on this side and maybe some steps um, leading down. Notice that we have um, some, some uh, you know, raised blocks here because of the terrain. Now, one of the things that is a good idea to do is make sure that you have support. I think I showed this to you a few episodes ago when we were, uh, you know, working with, with blocks and whatnot. But 
Um, you, you can check the structural integrity of your blocks by pressing the N key, as in Nancy, clicking the debug key, and then clicking show structural integrity. Okay, now press escape to get out of this menu. And you can see that these blocks out on the corner are starting to get a little bit darker because of the fact that, you know, they're, they're not directly supported from the ground. And, you know, the further out that I go, the redder they get and until you get to a point where they will actually collapse okay so you want to pay close attention to structural integrity and what I will do in this case is at the very least I will put um, a supporting block down in here like so so that that way you know we're good and solid on all corners of our little structure here let's press the T key access our multi-tool Make sure that it's on Retrieve Blocks by checking in the lower right-hand corner. If it wasn't, I would right-click and set it to, to Retrieve Blocks. And then we'll just pick these blocks back up because we don't actually want them there. That was just there to demonstrate this, the SI. Okay. Now, um, since we have plenty more blocks, what I'm going to do not because I need to for SI, so to speak, for structural integrity, but just, just for aesthetic reasons. I'm going to go ahead and actually fill in this gap here, too. So I'm just going to drag those blocks all the way over on that side, and we'll do the same thing here. Again, I don't need to do this. I'm just doing it because I think it's going to look a little bit better. We still have just a tiny little gap there. I don't know. Can we scooch a block in there, too? Yes, we can. Very good. So now everything's flushed with the ground, and it looks a little bit, bit better than it otherwise would. This is actually, this corner is also uh, up there, too. Can we pop one in there? No, I don't think it's going to let me because it's there's too much too much terrain. That's all right. We'll just leave it that way. There is a way you we could actually make that work, though. Let's look at that for a second. I don't want to dig this out because then I'm going to screw up the train and make it look like shit. Um, but I want I want to remove this gap again. This is not necessary. It's a, it's just for aesthetics and because I have plenty of blocks I'm not you know, I'm not worried about uh, not enough resources So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick these corner blocks back up for a moment Now I'm going to press the T key and when I set these this time I'm gonna I'm gonna click and hold the mouse and I'm gonna drag is all the way down see how it filled that little corner in and then release them out oh it still isn't doing it interesting usually it will okay well I guess I guess we we have to leave it the way it is I mean we could try and tweak it with the fine drill but it's not worth it we'll probably end up screwing it up and making it look like crap and then I'll regret it so we're just gonna leave it the way that it is in most cases though um, you know if there was just maybe a, a tiny bit more space you could drag the third block all the way down into the ground and the game will, will put it there but in this case it doesn't look like it wants to behave not a big deal though excellent okay now um, we're gonna go ahead and build our walls next and so we'll, we'll follow the same basic design that we did here on our normal base or on our, our main building of the base I should say and if we want, to, if we actually want to follow that all the way, we should probably change these blocks out to the round blocks. So let's just do that now. Get her done, then we don't got to worry about it later. Okay, let's press the T key. Now we're going to right click and we're going to select the edge round block and we're going to rotate it by pressing the um, delete key till we get to the that axis there, whatever that is, that's the YZ axis, I don't know what it is, it's, I, I never pay attention to that, I just rotate it till it's going the direction I want it to. And then I'm going to press the home key to rotate it up that way. Then I'm going to press the delete key a couple of times to get it back to the vertical axis. And then I'm going to press the home key to flip it around so that it's going the right direction. Now I'm going to press and hold my mouse button down and plant that corner down into the ground. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll hit the end key to rotate it. And we will plant that right down into the ground. But again, it doesn't want to put the second one down, but that's okay. Not a big deal. Excellent. Okay. Now... One, one, one of the things that I'm going to do with this greenhouse is that I'm going to actually put thinner blocks in 
because um, you know then we'll kind of have like a bit of a walkway in here and the, and the thinner blocks will not you know completely block that and we can still walk around it okay so the way we're gonna do that let's go over to this corner since we're already in you know that orientation I'm going to right click and I'm gonna select select the wall sloped round so this is basically the wall version of the of this solid block we're gonna select that and we're gonna hold down our mouse button and we're gonna bring this up two levels okay the reason we're bringing it up two levels is because whenever when you put the grow lights down I'm pressing the home key to rotate this so we'll go up two levels the grow light has to be two blocks above the crop plot okay it has to be two blocks it can't be three it can't be one it has to be two in order for it to work correctly all right good now let's go ahead and um let me think about this for a second i think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the caps in no actually let's not do that yet let's do the walls next so i'm going to select the wall block right click select the wall block uh, hit the end key to rotate it and then i'm going to hold down the control key and keep my finger on the control key press the left mouse button and now we're going to put in a plane of blocks once I have it positioned, I'm going to release the mouse button first and then release the control key. We already learned that technique a few episodes ago, but it's always good to review. Let's do the same thing here. We're going to hit the end key to flip that around that way. I'm going to kind of move my drone back this way a little more too. Hold down the control key, click the left mouse button and hold it down, and then drag my plane. And I don't even need to go past the symmetry plane because it'll, it'll take care of it uh, for me. Um, yeah, okay, same thing here. Good. So we got our walls in place, but that still gives us a nice little walkway inside here that we can walk along so we're not stepping on our crop plots. No, it's not like Minecraft. You can actually step on your crops and it isn't going to hurt anything, but who wants to actually step on their crops, right? All right, so let's do this. Now we're going to um, right-click and we're going to... Uh, select the the cap piece for this and to find that I think I'm gonna need to go into the round shapes and pipes and let me just look here for a second and see if I can spot this guy not see it in here is it it's probably not in corners and connectors or oh, maybe it is in corners and connectors nope it's not all right how about Thin walls. This is kind of what I have in mind, but this is not the correct... Oh, this is the one I want. Yeah, wall corner round. Okay. There we go. So we'll put our corner caps on here. Get the end key to rotate it. Excellent. Okay, cool. Um, now, the next thing we want to do is we're going to... I have to think about this for a second. What I'm going to do is, well, here, let's do this. Let's put the, um, I'm going to put a, cent a central pillar right in the middle of this. I'm sort of kind of making this up as I go. I don't have an exact idea of what I want to do. I have a general idea. That's kind of how I build things in this game. I just start with the general idea and then it turns into whatever it turns into, right? Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to select this um, cylinder thin block. We're going to rotate it um, so that it's, you know, right side up. Okay. And let's bring that up um, two blocks high as well. No, actually we want... Yeah, we do want that to be two blocks high. Okay. I want to check and see uh, where we're at with our window. So I hit the F4 key, go into the output, and we have our 20 windows. Actually, we might actually need more than that, but let's start with these. So I'm going to put the 20 windows down here on our toolbar. So what I'm going to do with the windows now is I'm going to place these along the, the curved edge. So I'm going to right-click and choose round vertical. 
and then make sure that that's in the right position. It's a little squirrely there, okay? Hold the mouse button down and then just do that. Let's rotate it once with the end key and put them in place there. And we ran out of glass. Okay, so we are definitely going to need to make some more glass, uh, quite a bit more as a matter of fact. Because I, in my body, am actually standing on a block that's connected to the base where my uh, constructor is, I can just press P right from here, go to the constructor from, with the devices tab, open it up from here, and tell it to make me some more glass blocks. So, um, I don't know, we're probably going to need maybe at least 40 more, so let's queue up, say, 40 of those and let that do its thing. So one thing we do want to decide, though, is um, how we're going to handle the grow lights. So I think what we'll do with that is... All right, let's, let's try something here. Um, remember that the grow lights have to be two blocks above the crop plots. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and um, go back to the uh, to here to this to the cylinder thins, and I think what we'll do is we'll put let's put a, a T joint up here, and we'll rotate it so it's uh, facing down. Yeah. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put um, just a, a a cylinder thin here, and we'll rotate it so it's going the right direction, like so. And then we're going to put a. I think we're going to put another T joint here. So let's rotate it that way, like so. Okay, yep. And then we're going to put another um, just cylinder thin here on both sides. Like so. And then we'll finish this off with a... Do we have a, a thin curve block for that? Let's take a look. And that's the big one. I don't, I don't think we do have the thin version of this. Or wait, no, we do. We don't have the fat version of that. Okay, actually, this is perfect, though. This is what we want. Um, okay, so let's rotate it this way, like so, and then we're just going to flip it around this way, like so. Very good. And guys, if you didn't already figure out, figure this out, the reason we're doing this is because we're going to put our grow lights um, on the end of these pipes. If we were doing just a solid roof without glass... Um, you know, we could just attach it right to the roof, but because we're putting glass down, and you could attach it to the glass too, but the problem with that is that it's going to not actually be affixed to it. It's going to be floating from it, and I hate doing that uh, in this game. I don't like stuff to be floating. Cool. Okay, let's press F4, and we got uh, 10 windows made up so far, so it's still working on that. Oh, I hope it's still working on that. We might actually be out of the resources let's press in and get rid of structural integrity and let's also press in and get rid of uh, the symmetry plane for the moment anyways um okay let's go back in here are you still working or did we run out of gosh dang it oh we did we're we're good i, th I was gonna say man i thought i had plenty of silicon silicon is like the main ingredient for glass so we should be fine with that. We are going to need to make two more grow lights, though, because we are going to go ahead and do four sections. Can I do those in here? I can. Okay, so let's just queue up two more grow lights in our small constructor. And um, get those done. How are we doing on our nutrient solution? So we were only able to make 20 of those. Uh, why? We've still got spoiled food, so what are we short on? Wow, that used all of that purified water. My goodness. Okay. Well, we got 11 more here. What we maybe ought to consider doing is...
putting in a, a big water generator. We're going to need one eventually anyway. Um, so that should allow us to make two more of these because it takes five water per. We're doing okay on stone dust for the moment. Okay, let's take a quick sidestep. So we need to do this anyways. We're going to go ahead and make ourselves a water generator. And what the water generator will do is it will make a big containers of water for us, which we can then use to make large containers of oxygen and small, uh, you know, the smaller water, water bottles, but much more quickly through the constructor and also hydrogen bottles, which you need for the best fuel in the game later on, uh, which are fusion cells. Okay, so let's go F3 to get, bring up the um, tech tree. And I think we learned this in base, well, on the base tab, but let me just double check that. All right, let's do this. Let's look in here. For some reason, I always have trouble eyeing the damn water generator. Is it over here? Do, 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 do. Where is the water generator? All right, let's try a different tactic. I don't know why I have such a hard time finding that damn thing. Um, if we go... Is it under miscellaneous? Is it under tools shouldn't be under tools i wouldn't think so now it's got to be in here so i just i just got to find the damn thing okay where in the world is it at let's go in here and let's type in They didn't re... Oh, there it is. Oh, you know what, you guys? I don't... I think you automatically know this. I don't think you need to learn it, and so that's probably why I'm not finding it in the tech tree. Let me look at that one more time. If, if it was going to be in here at all, it would either be in miscellaneous... Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's under miscellaneous. It's not under base. And, and and I was right. It's You just automatically know it right from the get-go because, see, it says zero points. Um, okay, well, that explains it. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the water generator then. And so um, I, I don't remember where I found that, so let's just do this. Okay, so it looks like it's under equipment. Let's try this again. Looks like it's under equipment, but you have to have the all filter thing and we'll select it. Because if you have the base, it filters it out. The thing that throws me off about that is I, I just always assume it's a base item, but it's not. It's a it's an all or a generic or an everything, you know, kind of item. Okay, good enough. Um, so let's go ahead and queue up a water generator too. And what we might even do is let's cancel the last glass so that we can actually get this guy going. And uh, and I want to get him set up and get it uh, going on getting water for us because uh, we're going to need that to continue making our crop plots. So we have a total of 22 crop plots. Okay, let's do this. Let's take the crop plots and we're going to put those in the input uh, bin. Now, to make the... Uh, I'm sorry, I was calling those crop plots. I'm, I meant nutrient solution. My bad. So to make the growing plots, uh, we need to make sure that we have cement and plant fibers available to us. So we've got, we have, we have 15 crushed stone, which will be turned into cement. We've got two wood logs and a few plant fibers. So yeah, let's just see how far we can get uh, with those. So we're going to go into here and we're going to queue up. I mean, we're going to, uh, we need a total of 36 when it's all said and done, right? So let's just, we're not going to be able to make 36, but let's just queue up 30 and we'll see how many we can get uh, from that. And then we'll just add what we need later as we go along. Now, in the output, 
Um, ben, let's change this to our player and then uh, go to output here. And we're going to put this um, down on our toolbar. And we also want to grab some... Uh, we want to grab some fuel. Let's use biofuel for this instead of promethean fuel. So I'm just going to um, put some biofuel down there too. All right, let's go out down to the water. One advantage of living close to the water, having your base close to the water, is you can be close to your water generators. If you're not, then usually you find a body of water somewhere nearby and you have to fly to it in order to um, access it. So the water genie doesn't have to be all the way down into the water. It just needs to be part of it. Uh, needs to be touching the water like this. So let's just put it so that it's all the way in the water. All right, and then I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to shift-click fuel into it to fill it all the way up, and then we just let it run. So one of the things to know about the uh, water generator is that you want to take pay attention to the source quality. Um, the better the quality, the faster this thing's going to produce. If I was on, say, like an arid planet, um, or maybe even in a swamp where the water's crappy and not nice and clean, um, you know, low, of low quality, then this number might be lower. And what that simply means is it's just going to take longer to produce nice, clean water for you. So 80% source quality is actually very good. But here again, we're on the nice, lush, green, temperate planet too, so that's to be expected. So this thing's gonna gonna make large water containers for us, and after we get a few of those, we can then take those back to the base, put them in the input bin, and then use the constructor to make our purified water, which is going to be much faster than this little feller here. But we'll keep this one going too, so we'll shift click more fuel into there just to keep it going. I'm gonna leave the O2 bot. whoops, I'm gonna leave the O2 bottles in there for now because um, I, I just don't need them right now and I don't want them to take up space. Okay, well, let's put these back in here. We should be able to make another nutrient solution now. And, um, good. So we got water going. All right, are you doing anything right now? Okay, you're still making our crop plot, so you continue doing that. Let's just work with however much glass we currently have available to us. I'm going to put that there. We're going to put the windows um, back on our toolbar now. Let's also grab our grow lights whilst we're at it, too. We need to cut a door, so let's do that now. Make sure we're on retrieve blocks, and we'll do the same thing on this side too. Okay. Let's hop up in our drone, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press T to get to the wireless menu, press 3 to get to my grow lights, and we're going to pop the grow lights down. Okay, good. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the grow lights use a, a fair amount of power, and I don't want them um, I don't want them using power right now because they're not doing anything for us. So I'm going to press P to get into the control panel. Notice that we added four new items to the base, so they are currently ungrouped. So what I'm going to do is group them. Now, um, there's a couple of ways you can deal with the grow lights. Um, if I go to the main switches, and I just turn the lights off. Excuse me. Um, that'll turn the grow lights off, but guess what? It turns all the lights off on the base, including, you know, the lights that we set up uh, in here. Well, this light in particular. That is off. It's just that my, my light on my drone is so bright that you can't really tell. Okay. So if I only want to turn just the grow lights themselves off and not all of the lights, the way that I handle that is that I go into the devices menu, I make sure that the grow lights are grouped, and then I can turn the group off, like that, without turning all the lights in the base off. Okay? So let's keep those turned off for now, because there's no point in having them, you know, drain power until they're actually ready to start helping us grow plants. But they are in place and they're ready to go. Okay, now let's put our symmetry plane back in place. Press the N key, select the um, XY plane, and it looks like it's still right in the center, so we're good to go there. Press escape to get out of the symmetry plane menu or the N menu. 
we need to get this uh, window in place because that's where we ran out of glass. So let's go ahead and make sure we're rotated the right direction and then we'll switch once again to the round vertical and pop that guy in place. Excellent. Let's do the same thing on this side now. Flip that around with the end key. Cool. Now, here's the thing that we're going to have that we're going to uh, need to be cognizant of here. And that is that even though this is a skinny round block, it's still um, it's still taking up the space of an, of, of, an, of a normal block, as you can see here, right? And so that's going to cause us problems with our glass panes because our glass panes, um, you know, we want, they're not going to fit there, in other words. So here, let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I go to here and I choose, um, like, just a flat plane or pane, bleep, 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 and I set it, I try and set it down to where um, it's pointing downwards, it's actually not going to sit flush with what I've put in place because these blocks are in the way. So there's a couple of way, ways we could handle this. One way we could handle it is that we could actually raise the walls up another block, and then we're good. The reason I didn't do that is a purely an, an aesthetic reason and it's not, not a practical reason. I kind of wanted the, the, the outbuilding to be one block lower than the main building. Again, just for the hell of it. Just because, I don't know, that's what was in my brain to do. But what we can do to m still make this work is we can simply flip these blocks upside down so they sit like this. Okay? Um, the only thing to keep in mind whenever you do something like this, though, is that um, you won't be able to put anything on the roof. But you know what? We don't really want to put anything on our glass roof anyways. That's generally not a good idea. So this is going to work fine for us. All I'm saying is that if you ever do this with like a, a different type of block and then you're and you're also planning on putting something on top of it later, you're going to run into the same problem just in reverse because I won't be able to put anything directly on top of this. It'll be one block's width up, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Okay, so let's go ahead now and put these blocks in place. So we're going to um, just click and drag to there. Uh-oh. That's not good. Okay, so probably what we ran into with that here. Let's see if we can pick this up really quick and get the materials before it uh, disappears. Probably what we ran into with that is a support issue. So if I um, wait a minute, why isn't that sitting flush on that corner? Oh, 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 okay. Sometimes this will happen. Uh, I've seen this before, it's, and it's a bug. Um, I actually laid those blocks down, but the uh, the SI calculation derped out and caused this block to collapse. But notice I can put it in there now, and it's okay. And when it did that, it also... I actually had laid those blocks down, but, I, but they were invisible. And so... As soon as I added another block, then it kind of resolved itself, and now those blocks appear once again. 